Hi, morning. Uh, time flies at this time of year. The one earnings result that we would be looking for this week, which is the only significant one, would be FedEx. But of course, they were a huge part of the drama that we saw last week. Uh, they claim to uh, connect 99% of the world's GDP. So when the CEO directly says he expects a global recession, uh, the, clearly the market takes it very seriously. And of course, that wasn't the only thing that happened last week. We had the shocking inflation print, which uh, I think, don't think in my career I've seen the market so offside and so consensus with it having run aggressively into the idea of a lower uh, than expected print than expected. I was joking by Tuesday morning that even my Delhi guy was telling me inflation was going to come in light. And of course, it came in heavy. As we highlighted in our note yesterday, uh, people overestimated the fact that gasoline is only 3% of CPI. It's highly volatile, by far the most volatile component. Uh, but ultimately, it's really shelter. And when I told my friend, the market maker, uh, whoops, on the inflation print, his response was rents are sticky. And rents are still at record highs. For example, here I highlighted the numbers for New York. Uh, with unemployment so low, they're going to stay sticky. And so the Fed is really behind the curve. Does that mean they raised by 100 basis points this week? I don't think so. But hey, what did I think about last week's inflation print? I thought too that in line with everyone else, it would probably be a bit light. So we'll see if the Fed goes to 100. I think the 75 numbers is, is by far, by far the most likely outcome. The biggest thing in oil markets at the moment is unquestionably China. Firstly, Chengdu is coming out of lockdown. Secondly, more importantly for pricing, uh, they're exporting a lot more product. Uh, and that means that refining margins remain under significant pressure. Now, as we've said, you don't want to panic when refining is bad in, in this part of the year, which is shoulder season, especially with no hurricanes. Uh, we always used to say refiners make one in Q1, two in Q2, three in Q3, and zero in Q4. And that changed a bit when the uh, U.S. crude prices got very discounted by the growth in U.S. production. Uh, at the moment, that that pressure at the margin is coming from the SPR. And of course, that's a major turning point that we see in markets coming through all October when the SPR, we believe, likely uh, will stop releasing a massive one million barrels a day into the Gulf system that really is kind of maxed out in terms of its ability to absorb the oil with refineries essentially having been at full capacity. So that's a major shift we see. In the note yesterday, the Sunday Sankey, we just highlighted, watch out for Iran at the moment. There could be a major shift there. The Supreme Leader is widely reported to be very ill. He's certainly old, uh, very old, uh, I think 83 actually, but he's he's been historically quite sickly in terms of having survived an assassination attempt and other things. So we could get major upheaval in Iran and we're speculating a little on what happens there in the note yesterday, just one to watch that not many people are talking about. Um, in Europe, uh, we did take last week's news that she was kind of disapproving of, of Putin in very Chinese terms, which is to say it, it wasn't exactly a, a yelling match, but he did signal that uh, Chinese support for Russia is not complete and Putin remains under immense pressure. We think the tail risk in the market is that there's some sort of capitulation there. And we did highlight comments that Putin was claiming that the Ukrainians were refusing to negotiate. So maybe there is a shift. And whilst everything looks extremely bearish here as we head into the Fed, Fed print, uh, we do think there's a tail risk of, of a sudden resolution. Because after all, if Putin rides this thing into winter and somehow, which ultimately they will, Germany, if not Germans, survive, um, not all Germans, um, unfortunately, because it does look extremely risky from a gas supply point of view, but ultimately, they'll come through winter, and by that time, uh, Putin will have no more leverage, arguably, uh, over Europe once they've moved away. We were very disapproving, by the way, of the European Energy Plan in our Friday note. Uh, not impressed, essentially, because there's no recognition of the policy errors that they've made. They're just adding more policies, most of which are highly uh, anti-market in terms of windfall tax, in terms of punishing low-cost electricity producers. And of course, in terms of reducing demand, which like FedEx says, will reduce global economic output. So it's tough tape without any doubt, just the tail risk of Russia, I guess. Uh, have a great week.